Our group chose fruit as our project because there are so many interpretations and it has many significant meanings. In the Portrait of Elizabeth by John Singleton Copley, Copley painted an aging but vibrant matriarch, a mother of 13, and a companion to her husband. Her portly figure and self-assured presence suggest a woman with a booming, commanding voice. However, her tight lipped makes her silence that more palpable. She's inviting us to join her in grasping a peach that's piled high into a pyramid shaped within the basket. The fruit is an extension of her fulsome self-image. In Joseph Blackburn's portrait of Isaac Winslow and his family, our attention is guided toward Winslow's older daughter who approaches a family with an apron overflowing with various fruit. Isaac Winslow was known to be part of Boston's mercantile elite, wealthy enough to afford portraits such as Blackburn's and Feek's painted seven years prior. Many see the overflowance of fruit as a symbol of abundance or the family's wealth, but others notice the emphasis of women and children through the use of lighting and colors and believe the fruits represent the Winslow's hopes for the fertility of present and future wives. The painting Veterans Room of the 7th Regiment by Louis C. Tiffany is based upon a room which he and his firm were commissioned to decorate. They used a variety of different cultural styles ranging from Celtic, Islamic, Greek, Egyptian, Persian, and Japanese. This helped create a very unique and aesthetically elegant room. The grapes towards the center of the table attribute to the elegance of the entire room by bringing it together with a rich ambience. Grapes can be directly linked to a higher upper class status with wines and other pleasantries. In this piece, John Smibert places the viewer in the company of Dean George Berkeley, a renowned philosopher, his family, and the well-known Bermuda group. In his famous poem titled America, the Muses' Refuge, a Prophecy, Berkeley wrote, There shall be sung another golden age. His prophecy of another golden age is symbolized by the seemingly golden fruit being offered to us by Berkeley's newborn son, Henry. In fact, the golden fruit is one of many allusions to Berkeley's prophesied golden age. The golden color of the fruit is repeated in his wife's dress and the sunrise in the background, which can also be seen as a way to signify the dawn of a new day. A piece that was a priority to include was Raphael Peel's still life titled Blackberries. The bright illuminated berries against the dark background creates a silent contemplative mood which almost instantaneously sparks a Christian interpretation. The seemingly juicy red berries can be seen as a representation of Christ's blood as well as a sacramental wine of Holy Communion. And the thorns of the wooden stem can allude to Christ's crown of thorns. Cremel's 4th of July in Century Square represents a communal gathering for Independence Day, as well as the addition of Philadelphia's new water pumping station. This was designed by Benjamin Latrobe, an architect of the U.S. Capitol. In the bottom left, a small picnic is taking place at the table. We see a basket of apples, which not only represents the people coming together, but yet it shows a young girl reaching to the basket as if it's her reaching for her growth, in addition to the community's growth as a whole. The Peaceable Kingdom of the Branch by Edward Hicks. The figural group represents William Penn, accompanied by other colonial Quakers making peace with Native Americans. The frame that holds the text of Christian meaning is portrayed by the young boy grasping a branch of grapes, clusters, and leaves that signify Christ's blood and the redemptive sacrifice of humankind. In the painting Shake Hands by Lily Martin, Spencer addresses a female audience by rejecting patriarchal dominance. Spencer represents women as a working housewives and cooks who prepare meals in cluttered kitchens with ingredients and utensils. In the lower left corner lies a basket of fre fresh apples that got washed and are ready to be prepared for dinner. In the painting, Renee Golden de Laudemire and the Indian Chief Author visit Rabout's Column by Jacques Lemonet de Maurice. When the French came to Florida for the second time, they were greeted with crowds of Indians along the shore. Commander Laudemire was welcomed with 20 musketeers to meet with Chief Author to exchange promises of friendship. 
This friendship entailed offerings of flower garlands, fruits, and vegetables surrounding the stone column, reassured that America was a garden like paradise. Few fruit were as controversial as the grapes held high above the head of Frederick MacMoney's nude Bichanti. When MacMoney's Bichanti, an infant fawn, was ordered to be banished from the courtyard of the Boston Public Library, one would assume it was because of the figure's unabashed nudity. However, the sculpture was seen as immoral because of the grape's connection to Bacchus, the Roman god of wine. Viewers, especially women, did not appreciate how they were inappropriately depicted. 